All right, in this video, I'm going to cover how we can implement uh, principal component analysis uh, using Python. And the example that I'm going to show is for uh, image classification. Uh, the data set that we're going to use is a preloaded data set from uh, scikit-learn called LFW people, and LFW stands for labeled faces in the wild. So it is a bunch of images of a group of people and those images are labeled. So let's go ahead and import it. Uh, you can go ahead and say from sklearn.datasets. Import fetch underscore LFW underscore people. And this is basically uh, is going to be a bunch object. Uh, so you can go ahead and say LFW people is equal to fetch LFW people and then give it a bunch of uh, options. The very first is minimum faces per person and then let's say that uh, we want 70 fa faces per person and then we also resize it to say 0.4 in order to have a manageable size of the spectres. So as I said this is a bunch object that is going to have the following attributes. It's going to have the images, data, target and target name. Images is basically going to be a representation of the images in a matrix format with a specific height and width, and each pixel represents a value in the grayscale image. Then data is basically the same information that is contained in images. However, while images is in the matrix format, data is in the array format. It is a flattened one-dimensional array of the original matrix that was represented previously in the images. Then we have target, which is an, another array uh, that contains integers corresponding to the labels of each image. So for example, zero means a particular person and one means another one and so forth. And then if you want to have the actual labels you have to look at the target underscore names which is in array containing the name of the people uh, in the data set so let me sh let me show how it works so you can say um, lfw.people that images and if you remember this was a set of matrices right i'm going to call it images is equal to this and then i say images that shape and once I run it I get this which says that there are 1288 observations and each observation is a 50 by 37 matrix the other attribute that we had was called uh, target names so let's do that as well so lfw underscore people dot target underscore names. I'm going to put it into a data frame or an object called target names. And then I'm going to look at the shape as well. And you see that it has an array that has seven uh, cells in it. So remember when we had the images, it was a data set that had 1,288 observations and the target names has seven values in it. It means that those 1,000 uh, and something pictures are about seven people. Now, you remember that when we want to work with these, uh, we have to uh, use the flattened uh, format of the uh, of the data and we are lucky here because we don't need to change the uh, shape of the images it's already done for us and it is stored in the data uh, attribute so we can go ahead and say lfw.people.data 
it is going to be our x. This is the basically set of features. And our y is going to be lfw.people. And that is with target. Again, remember, target is going to be the integer values corresponding with the target names. So uh, rather than say George Bush, it may say two, or rather than Al Gore, it may say three, and so forth. And talking about the name of the people, let me uh, display some of these images for you. So we can say plt uh, show, and before we can use that, remember that we have to import uh, pyplotlib. But let me just finish the code here and then import it afterwards. plt show, and then we can say, all right, we want to look at the images uh, at the very first uh, cell, and that the color map is gray. And uh, let me go ahead and import my libraries before I can do anything here. So import matplotlib dot image or import matplotlib. So sorry, let me first do this pyplot as plt, and then from matplot lib.image import imread. We're going to use that because we're going to read some pictures in the, uh, you know, down the road. Import numP as NP and import uh, pandas as PD. And uh, because I want to get rid of the potential warnings that are going to be displayed, I'm going to import warnings and then filter them out. So. Sorry. Okay. Now that I have uh, imported PyPlotLab, I can show these images and you see that this is one of the images. So let's also put the uh, target label on the image as well so that we know who this is. We can go ahead and say plt.title and then what is going to be the title? Title is actually going to be the uh, target name that is associated with the same index uh, that we are displaying the picture. So you can go ahead and say target names, and then the index is going to be in lfw.people.target, and the same index because we are looking at the first one, and here I'm looking at the first one as well. So. Let's run it, and it says it's Hugo Chavez. Now, if I change it to one to look at another person, you see that this guy is Tony Blair. Now two. This guy is George Bush. Three. Colin Powell, and so forth. So a bunch of uh, world-renowned politicians here. All right, now that we have this data set, what I'm going to do is to create a classifier. Uh, specifically, I'm going to have a support vector machine to help me classify these images. And then I'm going to look at the performance of my algorithm. Once I have done that, I'm going to try to implement principal component analysis in order to reduce the dimensionality of my data to see if I can have better performance uh, based on the transformed uh, data that has lower number of dimensions. 
And remember that we have already defined our X and Y. X is the features data set and Y is the labels data set. So what we have to do is to go ahead and say from sklearn, dot model selection import train test split and then define x train x test y train and y test using the function that we just imported which needs two inputs x and y and then the size of the test proportion, which we're going to use, say, 25%. And then if you want to get the exact same results that I get, define the random state, and I'm just going to put 1984 here. So let's run it, and it runs perfectly fine. I'm just going to bring them down here so that you can see them easily on the screen. All right. Now, we have to import the uh, principal component analysis uh, into, a scalar, uh, into, into our environment from a scalar. So we can go ahead and say from a scalar dot decomposition import PCA. Let's run it and just keep it for now. So now that I have imported my PCA, what I'm going to do is to create an object based on this PCA function that I have. So I say PCA is equal to PCA and give the uh, attribute of n underscore components, which are basically the number of components as say 150 and then in order to run this on my data set I have to say dot fit and give it the training data set so what is going to happen here is that there is going to be a principal component analysis transformation on my training data set such that the number of features would be reduced down to 150 principal components as I have defined here. The results are going to be uh, put in the PCA object. So let me run this. All right, now that I have my principal components, what I want to do is to transform my original X train and X test data set such that each observation is projected on these new 150 components that I have. And to do that, I can use the transform attribute. So I can go ahead and say X train underscore PCA is going to be PCA dot transform x train and then do the same for the testing x test pca is equal to pca dot transform x test so there is going to be a projection of the original values of the features, which were the pixel values, in the training and testing data set based on those 150 principal components that are going to be stored in X-Test PCA and X-Train PCA objects for me. So I'm going to run this to see if there is any errors and there is the typo here. Okay, and now it's fine. Now, what I'm going to do is to import the support vector classifier. So from sklearn 
dot svm import svc and because I'm going to look at the performance of my model I'm going to say from sklearn dot metrics import classification report comma confusion metrics so I'm importing both of them at the same step all right now I'm going to define my classifier as SVC and define two options here the very first one is the type of kernel which I'm going to use RBF standing for radial basis function this is a very commonly used kernel for nonlinear classification problems as the one that we have here and then the other option that I'm going to use here is uh, class weight and I'm going to say balanced because our data is really not very balanced it is advised to add this option it helps with the improvement uh, it helps with the accuracy of your model all right once we have defined this we can go ahead and do the same thing that we used to do before which is fitting our algorithm so i can say clf dot fit i'm going to use it uh, these transform data sets that i have so they were x uh, train pca so i'm going to use the same thing and the labels are in the y train so let's run this and now that it's trained we can look at the performance i can say uh let me put it here scoring the pca transformed data and that would be using the score so I can say clf.score and what am I going to score it based on I'm going to score it based on the test so it's going to be based on x test and y test and remember I'm looking at the transformed version and I get 0.76 now let's do another thing and that is to train an algorithm the same algorithm uh, on the original data set and then testing it on uh, the original shape data set to see if there is any difference in the performance so what I am going to do is to copy this here so CLF the same classifier that we had instead of training it on X train PCA I'm just going to train it on X train and then I'm going to score it on X test rather than the transform version. So let's see what we get here. Indicating that despite the fact that with the PCA transformation, we are re reducing the features or dimensions of our data set quite significantly. To be precise, we are reducing the number of features from eight, uh, 1850, which was the uh, 50 multiplied by 37 pixels that we had. So each image consists of 1850 uh, features. We are reducing that to only 150. And despite that, the accuracy of our model uh, goes down from 0.77 to 0.76 a very negligible decrease in accuracy in return for reducing the dimensions of our data set quite significantly uh, we are reducing it by more than 90 percent now what i'm going to do just to check is if we increase the number of dimensions of components from 150 to say 250 if we get anything better And the improvement is very uh, small. So it goes down from 77, 
0.76 to 0.77, so almost half a percent increases in accuracy. And with 250 euro, almost the same accuracy as the original data set. All right, now let me show you a new way to display the confusion matrix. What I'm going to do first is to uh, create an object. I'm going to uh, call it CM, short for confusion matrix, and use the uh, confusion matrix uh, functionality that I've already imported. Uh, and I'm going to use my Y test as the true labels. And then I need the predictions. So before I can do that, I have to first put my predictions in, a, in an array. And to do that, I'm going to insert a cell here and first create the prediction. So I'm going to call it YPRED PCA, which are the basically identifying the uh, PCA uh, transform predictions. So that is going to be the ones that are here. So let me first comment these out because I don't want to retrain it. I'm just going to train it based on the PCA transform data. So I have this. I'm not going to run this. And this is going to be clf.predict. And then what I'm going to be predicting is going to be based on X test PCA here. All right, now I can go ahead and use this as the predictions. And then I'm going to say labels is equal to range length of target names. So basically here, labels is going to be an array that is going to have the same length as the target names. Uh, which I think is going to be seven. And then uh, by here, it's going to be from like zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? That is what the range does. So let's see if it runs. And it does. And then just to show you what we're creating, let me remove that part. And this is basically uh, the confusion matrix. I'm just putting it into an object called CM without displaying it. Then I can use confusion matrix display. And remember, I'm doing this instead of using a heat map uh, from Seaborn. So this is another way. Uh, confusion matrix display is a function that's going to basically display my confusion matrix in a nice way. And one of the things that it needs is basically the uh, confusion matrix that you want to display and I say it is stored in the CM and then display labels are going to be in target names. Before we can use it, we have to store this in, a, in an object because otherwise there's not going to be uh, anything displayed here yet. So you just say display is equal to this run it again and then you can say display dot plot and let's do this step by step to see how it looks like so first you get this which is not really optimal and let's do uh, improvements uh, step by step by changing the color map to blues sure that we put this here and also put the equal sign here All right it's blue it's good then the other thing is that I don't want to have this uh, color bar so I just type in color bar is equal to false it's better you know the other thing that I want to get fixed is that I want uh, the uh, labels here to be in a vertical position so that they are not going to be overlaying each other. And for that, I can actually use the X ticks rotation. And I just say it wants, it should be vertical. I 
can see they are now rotated. So this is your uh, confusion matrix. Very nicely displayed, and it basically, you know, tells you how many times the algorithm has taken somebody uh, for mistake. So, for example, this uh, value of, say, 1 here shows that there were one instance where the uh, picture displayed uh, Ariel Sharon. However, the algorithm thought it was uh, Colin Powell, right? Uh, and then this one, which is quite a lot, is that it's Colin Powell was uh, mistaken for George Bush. Now, one other thing that I want you to note that is that there is a lot of pictures from George Bush in this data set, right? That's why it was not balanced. Now, one other thing that I want to do is to uh, print my classification report because that is another way that I can see how my algorithm is doing. So I can say classification underscore report. And then uh, why do I, what do I need? I need my true labels, which is the Y test. And then I need my predicted tables, uh, labels, which is Y underscore PRID PACA. And then I'm going to use the target names as the ones that are in my target names object or data or array in this case. It's not really nice if I just type in print and put it in a print, it would be much nicer. So we get detailed uh, performance metrics about precision recall F1 score for each of the classes. So precision is basically telling us that for Ariel Sharon, in 75% of the instances that the algorithm said that this is Ariel Sharon, it was actually correct. And the recall of 0.71 says that of all the images of Ariel Sharon, the algorithm could find 71% of them. Support is telling how many instances of that particular class exists in our testing data set. So there are 17 images of Ariel Sharon. And remember, I told you that this is an unbalanced data set. It's because George Bush has 132 images in the data set. 80% of the times when the algorithm predicted the picture to be George Bush, it was correct. And also algorithm has predicted 80 or has found 87% of the images of George Bush in the data set. So 13% of them it couldn't find. 